to please hold off. Uh, the Honourable Member for uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary can start from the top. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. So this app was put in place one month after a global pandemic was declared. And in return, and in, in return for, doing, for answering that question where the honourable member has insinuated that the price is entirely related to developing the app, that price related to development, accessibility, and ma support, maintenance, and multiple different contracts, it was not related just to the development of the app. The Honourable Member for Niagara Falls. Madam Speaker, Canadians can't afford this costly coalition between the Liberals and the NDP. We all know they want to triple the carbon tax. Now, the Globe and Mail has reported the government is on pace to more than double their spending on the disastrous ArriveCan app. This app has cost the Canadian tourism industry their 2022 summer tourism season. It has wreaked havoc on border communities, caused chaos at our airports, and it hurt Canada's reputation as a world-class tourism destination. Yeah. Speaker, Canadians are wondering two things. Who got rich at their expense? And when will this government finally scrap this app? Great question. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Mr. Speaker, the government has already announced that the app is now not mandatory, it is voluntary. And so the app is put in place at the beginning of the pandemic to save lives. The app was used appropriately for the last two years, and now the government has allowed the app to be voluntary in order to expedite people moving forward at the border more quickly. The Honourable Member for Mayotte-Éclairable. Madam Speaker, the app was surely put in place to make some people rich because $54 million would be a million hours of work for an engineer. That's 31,000 weeks or 596 years for one person. The numbers just don't add up, Madam Speaker. The, speaks, the facts speak for themselves. The Liberals don't want to reveal who got rich. Uh, is it someone on Liberal list? Uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Monsieur, Madame la Présidente. Madam Speaker. We're not going to apologize for an app that so saved lives. The app was put in place at the beginning of the pandemic to protect Canadians' lives, and thousands of lives were saved thanks to that app. Thank you. And then Fanshawe. Canadians are worried about the effects of the climate emergency and Putin's illegal invasion into Ukraine. And now Canada's chief of defence staff has made an unprecedented call to immediately halt non-essential activities in the armed forces. Our forces have a personnel crisis. One in ten positions are unfilled and we are only receiving half the applicants we need. On sexual misconduct, this government has failed to implement numerous judicial reports. When will this government take the real steps to properly invest in recruitment so Canadians can be supported abroad and here at home? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defence. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Making sure that our Canadian Armed Forces have the right number of people, the capabilities and the culture that they need to meet current and emerging threats is our highest priority. The reconstitution, the, the reconstitution directive and retention strategy will, will help ensure that we can grow and retain talent so that our Canadian Armed Forces can continue to serve Canadians. We remain focused on enabling lasting culture change, creating the best recruitment practices, and procuring the right equipment for our Canadian Armed Forces. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. In yesterday's report of the Special Committee on Afghanistan, this government said they agree applications for Afghans who served Canada must be processed immediately. Yet Afghans who applied almost two years ago are still waiting for a response. And to make matters worse, the Liberals are sticking to an arbitrary cap and new applications are no longer being accepted. Meanwhile, I continue to receive urgent pleas from Afghans being hunted down by the Taliban. Some have disappeared. Will this government commit today to lift the arbitrary cap for Afghans and immediately expedite their processing. Minister of Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship. Madam Speaker, I thank the Honourable Member for her question and her passion and advocacy on behalf of some of the most vulnerable people in the world. 
I share her concern about their vulnerability, and that's why we advance one of the most substantial commitments, and in fact, the most substantial on a per capita basis, to resettle at least 40,000 Afghan refugees by the end of next year. I'm so pleased to share with this House, just a couple of weeks ago, we've actually crossed an important milestone and now have more than 20,000 Afghan refugees living safely in Canada. We are not done. We're going to continue to do everything we can and make good on our commitment, no matter what it takes. For Calgary Skyview.